Hello friends, welcome back to my channel on injection molding. So today I am going to talk on more filling and packing. So you will find some tips to control warpage in this presentation. So let us understand different stages in an injection molding cycle. So you first close the mold, then you fill the part. Then you apply packing or holding pressure for a certain time. Then you cool the part inside a closed mold during which you know you prepare for the next shot and then you open the mold and eject the component. Here we, today we are going to understand one important property or quality of polymer melts. So unlike most of the metal melts, the polymer melts are compressible in nature. That means they are not only viscous, they are elastic or compressible in nature. So if you apply pressure on a polymer melt, it first gets compressed and then it starts moving or flowing. Hence the actual flow rates are less than the ram displacement. For example, if uh, for a certain ram velocity, the expected flow rate say 100 cc per second, but you will never get 100 cc per second, you will get less than that. This is because of the compressible nature of the polymer melt. However, it is advantageous in the filling. The melt compressivity causes smooth transition from mold filling to packing. In my first uh, presentation, we understood that once the mold gets 94 to 98% filled, it gets pressurized sufficient enough to fill the rest of the part. This compressible nature of the polymer melt causes smooth transition of mold filling to packing. The actual filling time is always greater than the set injection time. Suppose your set injection time is say 3 seconds. If you see, if you observe the actual injection time, it will be more than 3, plus somewhere close to 3.1 to 3.2 seconds depending on the polymer property and the mild compressibility. Here, you know, I am going to demonstrate uh, the filling behavior and the packing behavior of a fully instrumented mold. It is a simple strip mold with a fan gate at the end. What we have done here, we have selected three points, PT1, PT2, PT3 and we have fitted pressure transducers at these points. So PT1 is the point near gate, PT3 is the furthest point or, or the end node of the part and PT2 is an intermediate part, point. So this is the output of the pressure transfer recordings. On a y scale we have pressure and on x scale we have time. So you start filling the part, the ramp starts moving forward. However, even the gate node does not start filling or pressurizing. It polymer mill first gets compressed then it flows through the runner sprue and runner system and finally into gate. So this is the point at which the gate node or PT1 starts filling and pressurizing. So it continues to rise the pressure and then it decays. Note at this point of time the ram is as ram stops. PT2 that is yellow graph it receives a melt at this point of time and then it gets pressurized and this is the pressure behavior. However the last point that is PT3 shown by purple color here you can note that it receives the melt even after the ram has stopped the movement. So the last point of filling or last 2 to 6 percent gets filled because of the pressurized cavity alone. This is uh, the output of the pressure transfer spreading uh, fitted inside the mold. Okay, now let us understand what happens in the packing. So time delay between ram displacement and polymer melt, polymer movement is because of the melt compressibility. Actual switch from 
Filling to packing occurs before cavity is filled and final stage of filling occurs by expansion of the pressure is melt. On machine this switch over can be set based on the displacement of the ram or it is time dependent. Now here let us understand a conventional packing profile. So on y axis let us consider pressure and x axis time. So conventionally at the end of filling we apply the packing pressure, keep it on for a certain time that is holding time and then we bring it to zero and we cool the mold, uh, cool the part inside the closed mold. So typically we have been using this constant or conventional packing pressure for many years. Let us see the effect of it on the polymer on the plastic part. So we have done the analysis using mold flow. You can see here volumetric shrinkage distribution. So blue region is at 2.96 percent shrinkage and the red region it is 5.02. So the variation is from 2.96 to 5.02. So gradually as you move away from the gate node your volumetric shrinkage increases. So the distribution also is more. Just keep this graph in mind for some certain, certain amount of time. We will understand, we will come back to this graph after some time. Pressure versus time plot. Okay, this is the output of the gate node that is node 30 and 114 is the end node. So you can see the gate node continues to remain under high pressure zone. That is the reason it has less volumetric shrinkage whereas the end nodes or intermediate nodes are having a more, more volumetric shrinkage. Now let us see if you do it differently like you know you apply the packing pressure keep it constant for some time and then you decay to zero. Now this decay what I have shown on the screen is a linear uh, decay profile but however you can have in four steps or three steps you can reduce in three different steps to zero then you cool the part inside the closed mold so this is one technique that can be used effectively to control volumetric shrinkage so let us understand what happens inside the mold now the graph is totally different now the end regions the first of all the variation has been reduced the gate nodes are shrinking more now and there is more uniform volume, volumetric shrinkage compared to the earlier situation. And you can see most of the nodes are having the same pressure profile. Now how to determine this decay profile? Of course for this you need to have a morphological analysis run on this particular part. The material data we material use is PP shell KMT 61000 grade was used. The no flow temperature is 160, ejection temperature is 150 that is the temperature at which you can eject the part safely without causing distortion. So from the temperature history of the end node, this last point of filling, find out the time required to reach 160 that is T no flow plus 20 degrees centigrade. So note that time T1 and from the temperature history of the gate node find out the time required to reach ejection temperature that is 150 degrees centigrade because once the gate node reaches the ejection temperature the gate virtually freezes and uh, no, no further packing is effective. So decay the packing profile between T1 and T2. So the next slide will show you, uh, you remember T2 is gate node 150 degrees and T1 is 180, 160 plus 80. So note down the time that is 3.1 to 5.2. So the summary, with decayed packing profile more uniform volumetric shrinkage across the regions of the part is obtained which results into less warpage observed on the molded parts. Short weight is also op op optimized. This helps in commercially 
useful it is a useful tool to reduce warpage on the part with varying wall thickness thank you i hope you like my presentation